Hey guys, so today I'm filming my spring makeup must-haves for 2015. I did film this video last year, so some products will be repeated, but I do have quite a few new products that I'm really excited to share with you. Spring is one of my all-time favorite seasons because I love pastel makeup. So in this video, I'm going to share with you some eyeshadows, blushes, lip colors, and nail polishes. So I have a ton of things laid out in front of me. I will have them all listed down below so you guys can refer back to that and I'm just going to jump into it with the eyeshadows. So for spring eyeshadows I don't have too many. I have one neutral trio that I reach for and a colorful MAC quad. So first I will start with the neutral trio and that would be Wet n Wild Walking on Eggshells. I'm wearing it on my eyes today. This is a incredible neutral undertone neutral trio. So it's not too warm, not too cool. I think the undertones of this neutral trio really flatter pastel colors and when I wear this neutral trio that means I can wear a pastel cheek and lip which I really love because I have a lot more options of that than I do of eyeshadow so I know I'm going to be using this a ton. I really really recommend this one and then when I want some more colorful spring eyeshadows like I said I have this quad from MAC. The shades I have in here are Stars and Rockets which is a Velux Pearl finish. Then I have Shimmer Moss which is also a Velux Pearl finish. This shade was discontinued but Steamy from MAC is the same color but it has a frost finish. Then we have Expensive Pink which is also a Velux Pearl finish. Makeup Geek Cosmopolitan is a dead on dupe. And then we have MAC's Free to Be which is a matte. So the reason that I love my Velux Pearl so much is because they have a duochrome effect to them which really just makes them extra special and I love them. So here are the swatches of those shadows. We have Stars and Rockets, Shimmer Moss, Expensive Pink, and Free to Be. So now moving on to some cheek products. Because I have a lot of different bronzers and highlighters in my collection, I have designated a specific one for each season to make sure that I am getting use out of all of them. So the bronzer I chose for spring would be this Milani Matte Bake Bronzer in the shade number 8 Sunset. This was a limited edition product. I'm sorry if you were not able to get your hands on it, but because I was, I still want to use it. So this is a great neutral tone bronzer, leaning a little bit warm. So this pairs really well with all of these pastel blushes. Then the contour powder I have to use during this season would be the MAC Sculpting Powder in the shade Sculpt. Again, this is a more neutral undertone, leaning a slight bit warm, so it pairs with these blushes really well. So for highlighter, I have this a little combo. Both are really beautiful champagne colors. And the first one I apply as a base, and that is the Benefit What's Up Cream Highlight. And then to set it, I apply my MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in the shade Soft and Gentle. This particular highlight can have some glitter fallout, so when I apply this base, it really helps this product really adhere to my skin. So I love this combo, and I think the colors, again, will be perfect with these spring blushes and bronzers. So moving on to blushes, I have one cream blush, one purple blush, five pink blushes, and six peach blushes. So the cream blush I will be reaching for this season would be the Maybelline Bouncy Blush in the shade Candy Coral. I know a lot of people don't like these. I personally do. This is the only one I have, but I have hit pan on it as you can see. I plan on using this as a base underneath some of my peach blushes and also on its own. This is in my Project Use It Up 2015, so I definitely want to make sure I get some good use out of this. But I actually really love the texture of this. It works well with my oily skin. So then I have my one purple blush. This is from Makeup Geek and it is in the shade secret admirer this is a beautiful lavender color it has a little bit more pink tone to it in person than is showing up on camera so it's actually much more wearable than a lilac shade and that would be my top swatch right here this is really pigmented beautiful purple blush so now moving on to my pink blushes the first one I have is the balm down boy which is a really nice light matte pastel pink that doesn't pull too warm or too cool. It really depends on what you pair it with. And that would be this second swatch right here is the Balm Down Boy. The next blush I have is from the Tarte Amazonian Clay Pen Up Girl Blush Palette that came out holiday 2014. And that would be this middle pink shade right here, which is Whimsy, which is a matte bubblegum pink. And that would be this third shade right here, Tarte Whimsy. The next blush I have is another limited edition from Tarte. This came out in a holiday 2012. This is the shade Fantastic, which is a neon bright 
pink but this is also a light neon color and that would be this fourth shade right here this is Tarte Fantastic the next blush I have is one of the Clinique Cheek Pops in the shade number four Plum Pop and this is some really pretty fuchsia undertones to it but it isn't too deep of a color so right here is Clinique Plum Pop so my last pink blush would be the Milani Matte Big Blush in the shade number 10, Delicioso Pink. This is one of my absolute favorite pink blushes. Here is a swatch it right here. It is very, very vibrant, but not too pastel. So this will actually work on quite a few different skin tones. So again, this is Milani Delicioso Pink. So now we're on to my six peach blushes. Three of them are on the lighter side, more of a sorbet type shade. And then I do have three more mid-tone peaches, which are my favorite, but I did want to have those lighter options in case that is more your style. So I'm going to start from lightest to deepest. So my first blush is a MAC Mineralized Blush in the shade Lured to Love. This came out holiday 2013. So if you were unable to get your hands on it, do not fret because the Milani Baked Blush and Luminoso is is a super similar color but Luminoso has more of a shimmer to it and the MAC does have a slight sheen but the Milani has more of a sheen but the color itself is very similar so this is the first shade much more of a sorbet type shade and this is a swatch of MAC Lured to Love. The next one I have is from the MAC Toledo collection which came out not too long ago and this is one of the blush ombres in the shade Ripe peach now this showed up a lot lighter on me than I thought it was going to so it is this second swatch right here this one has a little bit more peachy to it and this is a little bit more orange reminds me of a cream sickle type shape so this would be Mac ripe peach the next one I have is a cult classic this is benefit Coralista really pretty sorbet type shade and this is a great mix between a really light and a medium peach shade so it will work for a lot more skin tones and the third swatch right here is Benefit Coralista. So now we are moving on to the more medium peach shades which are my favorite and the first one is a holy grail blush of mine. This is the Balm Frat Boy. This is a matte blush and this is kind of a dusty peachy pink which I really love. I think this is a gorgeous one and this shade right here is the Balm Frat Boy. The next one I have is another Clinique Cheek Pop. This is in the shade Peach Pop and this has a very nice subtle glow to it so it will look really natural on your skin without looking shimmery. So this would be great for even people with wrinkles, large pores, or blemishes. Those blushes would be perfect. So here is a swatch of the Clinique Cheek Pop in the shade Peach Pop. My last peach blush would be one of the Tarte Imazunin Clay Blushes in the shade Blissful, a really pretty medium deep dusty peach color which I think is so stunning. So like I said, I love all three of those so much. So this is a swatch of the Tarte Imazonian Clay Blush in Blissful. So now on to the lip colors. I have five purples, five pinks, and five peaches. So I'm going to start with the five purple shades. So the first purple lip product is one of the Revlon Just Bitten Kissable Balm Stains. And this is in the shade Darling. I have it swatched right at the top. This is a beautiful lavender shade. This is a very, very wearable purple and a great comfortable formula and it actually does stain the lips. So this is definitely a great pick if you are wanting to try out purple but you're a little bit intimidated by it. The next product is one of the ColourPop Lippy Sticks in the shade Brills, which is the second swatch here, and this has a satin finish. As you can see, this is more of a lilac because it is a white mixed with purple, and this is more on the dusty side, not as bright as some other lilacs. The next one I have is a ColourPop Lippy Stick in the shade Corset, which is this third swatch right here. This is a hyper glossy finish, so it will give a really nice sheen to your lips and make them look a little bit fuller. And as you can see, compared to Brills, this has much more pink to it, so this is more of a true lavender shade. The next lip color I have is one of the Maybelline Rebel Blooms lipsticks in the shade Lilac Flesh, which is this four swatch right here. So this is somewhere in between a lilac and a lavender. It has some white and some pink tones to this purple. This one is much more bright and not as wearable as the other options I have mentioned. So if you want something more intense, this is definitely the one to go with. And the last one we have is my favorite. This is the MAC Sheen Supreme Lipstick in the shade Asian Flower, which is this bottom swatch right here. Again, a very, very wearable lavender shade, a super comfortable formula, great for just a really nice pop of color. 
but again like I said this is much more wearable than some of my other options so now moving on to my five pink options the first one I have is a another Revlon just bit in kissable balm stain this is in the shade cherish which is a really pretty light blue tone pink it is the top swatch right here but again this is a very wearable light pink color one of my absolute favorites the next shade I have is a Revlon colorburst lip butter in the shade strawberry shortcake which is the second swatch and this is more of a neutral undertone so if you're someone that's kind of afraid of really blue tone lipsticks then I would recommend this neutral undertone pink and this is again a really comfortable formula and this isn't going to be power packed of pigment but this will give a nice light wash of color to your lips. The next lipstick I have is one of the Revlon Super Lustrous lipsticks in the shade Prem Rose. That would be the third swatch right here. This is a dupe from MAC Snob, and this is a blue tone pink, but it is very wearable. It is not anything as crazy intense as MAC Saint Germain. I recommend this lipstick if you're looking for a wearable blue tone pink. The next lipstick I have is one of the Milani Color Statement Matte Lipsticks, and this is in the shade Matte Blissful, which is this fourth swatch here. This is also a blue tone pink, but this is mixed with a mauve shade as well. So this one is also very wearable, and it's not going to be as bright as some of the other colors, and this is a very comfortable matte formula. Lastly, I have a lip gloss. This is one of the NYX Butter Glosses in the shade Meringue, which is a really pretty blue tone pink, and that would be the last swatch here. This is something you can wear on its own or as a topper for lipsticks. I really like to pair this gloss with the Revlon Primrose lipstick. I think they pair together really beautifully. So now we're moving on to my five peach lippies. The first one I have is a ColourPop lippy stick in the shade Cake, which is this top swatch here. This is a bright peachy pink color and this is very pretty but this is not going to be one of the most wearable options that I'm showing you. So if you really want a bright lippy for a great price, I would recommend ColourPop Cake. The next lipstick is the one that I'm wearing today. This is a Stila Color Balm lipstick in the shade Avery, which is the second swatch. Again, a really pretty peachy pink color, but this is a bit more wearable than the ColourPop Cake shade, which of course it will depend on your skin tone, but I love the formula of this as well. Really comfortable, creamy, and it has a nice mint scent. The next lipstick I have is another of the Maybelline Rebel Blooms, and this is in the shade Peach Poppy, which should be the third swatch right here. And this is, again, one of the more bright shades, but this is a bit more sheer and buildable, where ColourPop's Cake is very, very intensely pigmented. So if you want the bright color, but you want a little bit more of a sheer wash, then I would recommend this shade. The next product is a lip gloss. This is another of the NYX Butter Glosses in the shade Maple Blondie. This is more of a muted peachy pink color, which is very very wearable and again this gives about medium coverage depending on the pigmentation of your lips so you can wear this on its own or as a topper and that would be this fourth swatch right here is the NYX Butter Gloss in Maple Blondie. Then I have another NYX Butter Gloss. This is in the shade Apple Strudel. This is much more of a neon peach so that would be the bottom swatch right here. That's Apple Strudel and as you can see them paired together. Maple Blondie has a bit more pink tones to it and it is more of a demure shade while as Apple Strudel is a lot more neon. So lastly I have nail polishes. I have one peach, three blue, four mint, and five purples. So I'm going to start with the only peach shade I have. So my peach nail polish is from the Formula X brand that you can find at Sephora and this is a shade Alive. This came out in a limited edition collection last year but I hope you guys were able to get your hands on it and this is a really great creamy peach shade. It has some pink undertones to it so it isn't orangey and I really love this. It is quite opaque. I had been wearing it last summer but I decided it was more of a spring polish. Moving on to my three blues. The first one I have is Zoya's Blue spelled B-L-U. This is a really pretty baby blue. It is a white tone blue that you would see in a nursery. I really love this and it's actually quite opaque. Zoya polishes never fail to impress me with their opacity so this is a great one if you're looking for a true baby blue. The next one I have is Essie Bikini So Teeny. This is a mix of a baby blue and a periwinkle shade. It is bright but still a bit dusty so this one is really pretty. It has some nice subtle shimmer to it as well. The last blue polish I have is one of the Berry M jelly polishes that you can only get in the UK. It is in the shade Blueberry and this is a true cornflower blue which is so so gorgeous. So love this one. Very opaque. Great formula. So now moving on to the mint shades. First off, I have two very light true mints, and then I have two more 
dusty mint jade shades that I really love for the spring. So the first one I have is a cult classic. This is the Sally Hansen Extreme Wear in the shade Mint Sorbet. A very nice white tone green mint shade that has a little bit of yellow to it as well. The next one I have is Zoya's Neely, which is a great mint, a great white tone green mint shade that is a bit dustier. When you compare the two together, you can definitely tell that the Sally Hansen has more of a yellow undertone to it, whilst the Zoya Neely has more of a true mint, even a slight bit of blue that you don't notice until you compare it next to the Sally Hansen. But if you were someone that does not like yellow in your mint polishes, then I would pass on that one and pick up Zoya's Neely. The next polish I have is a Sally Hansen Extreme Wear in the shade Cute A Pillar. This is out right now in a limited edition collection, so I would recommend you jump on it. A really pretty dusty jade shade. And the next polish I have is OPI Mermaid Tears. This came out in the Pirates of the Caribbean collection in like 2010 or something, so it's pretty old, but it is one of my holy grail polishes. So I picked up this polish because I thought it would be really similar to OPI. And as you can see paired together, the Sally Hansen has a bit more blue to it, so they are not the same, but if you were unable to get mermaid tears, definitely try to find this Sally Hansen cute a pillar. So last but polish, I have my five purples. The first one is a true lilac. This is Sally Hansen Extreme Wear in Lacy Lilac. This is a white tone purple, great formula, very opaque, love this one a lot. The next shade I have is Berry M Jelly Polish in Prickly Pear, and this is a mix of a lilac and a periwinkle purple shade, so I really love this. Again, very opaque, great formula. The next polish I have is OPI You Are Such a Budapest. This was part of a limited edition collection, but this has become permanent, and you can definitely pick this up at your Ulta. And this is a periwinkle purple shade. It has a little bit of blue to it, but it definitely pulls more purple. What's funny about this one is that in pictures, it looks more blue, but on camera, it looks more purple. And in person, outside, purple, inside, blue. So it's really unique, and I really love it. So this is a great formula, a beautiful color, and a staple for spring. The next shade I have is Essie Playdate, which I'm wearing right now. This was opaque in two coats, and this is what I would describe as a true radiant orchid polish. Very pretty, and it is brighter than the other shades that I'm mentioning, but I definitely will get more use out of this in the spring than I would in the summer. The last polish I have is one of the Zoya Pixie Dust, which is their textured collection in the shade Stevie. This is a nice lilac purple shade with some silver shimmer in it. Gives a really cool textured effect. I really love the form of the Zoya Pixie Dust. So guys, that was my spring makeup must-haves for 2015. I know this was really long and I do apologize. Make sure you check the description box for a list of all the products in case you want to refer back to that. Leave a comment down below of your spring makeup must-haves. I would really, really, really love to know. Thank you so much for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye guys.